Okay, so this is going to be a comparison of two battery testers, the Hayoki BT3554-01 here. Um, I got this recently from the Element 14 road test program. Um, I'll leave links in the description to the host of videos that I've created on this unit showing how it's being used and also to the actual road test on the Element 14 website. Um, the appellant, uh, namely the A528 here, I've had that for a number of years. I bought that specifically to test backup batteries on protection relays and PLCs and I'll show that later on in the video when I do a little bit of testing with it. Um, so the Hioki we've seen before, this comes in a hard case. Um, you also get a zero ohms adjust board in there and one set of probes and the USB comms lead. This also has enough space for a second set of leads which is the, the right angled probe tips that I've got here but you have to buy them as extras. Now the applant here, uh, this comes in a soft case and kind of starts one of the issues that I have with it straight away. You have uh, two sets of leads with this one. This has the concentric probes with it uh, that will fit in the front compartment and it also has Kelvin clips as well that will fit in the front compartment there and it zips up no problems and then the meter itself sits in he says yeah the meter himself sits in there and you can close this all up uh, but unfortunately that leaves you with a charger which there's no room in the soft case for which is a little bit annoying um, the battery pack in this is a bespoke 7.4 volt 2.2 amp hour it's either a lithium or a, a NICAD battery in that whereas the Hayoki takes standard um, AA battery cells six of in there so that's the first thing that kind of annoys me a little bit with this uh, applant because I'm forever this place in this charger pin on it is a relatively small one it's not a standard one that I tend to see around standard 2.1 millimeter pin uh, usually for DC jacks I'm used to this is a bit smaller um, so as I say you've got two sets of leads that come with this this is um, a bespoke adapter that sits on the front here that plugs in um, but they are still standard 4mm safeties so you can put your own leads in there. The only thing you have to watch out for, whereas what I'm used to seeing on a lot of instruments, this here is sense and source for one side, sense and source for the other side. Again, standard four mil, so you can plug in whatever you like. This one here, you can see that the source and sense are actually split. They're not next to one another as they are on this unit. So you just have to be a bit careful when you're connecting that up. But these little leads, fairly reasonable. Um, and you can buy these separately as well. There are a number of fixtures, test fixtures you can have for it. Okay, so we'll switch them on there and put his light on him so you can see him hopefully. And then we'll switch him on as well. Until he boots up. Okay, so no backlight on this one whatsoever, but it doesn't really need it. So in terms of resistance measurements, this will measure from one micro ohm up to 3.1 milli ohms, whereas the AT528 here will go from 10 micro ohms up to 2.2 kilo ohms. Tolerance wise, plus or minus 0.8% on this, 0.5% on this one. So slightly better tolerance claimed and a much wider resistance band measured. Voltage wise, one millivolt to 60 volts on this, uh, 200 microvolts to 50 volts on this. Um, so not quite as high voltage on this one, but it will read a lower voltage. And tolerance wise is 0.08% on this, 0.1% on this. So this unit is kind of a little bit better at resistance measurements, but not as quite as good on the voltage side of things. Depends on what you uh, want from the unit, I guess. Both of these units have memory on them. This does 6,000 records. This will only do 2,000 records. 
in comparison to how that works on this, this splits the memory up into 12 slots. So I can do 12 different sets of batteries and test them and save them independently. Whereas this is just a basic one set of records, one to 2000. So I kind of prefer the way the memory is set up on this. It's much more user friendly and versatile for my kind of work. The unit here, that's pretty much all it does, ohms and volts. This unit on the other hand also adds temperature into the measurement uh, if you have the probe that plugs into the back. Um, so ohms voltage temperature but only ohms and voltage on this unit. Um, the other thing that is majorly different between the operation of these two, you can see in when I test a few battery cells, this one has an auto hold and an auto save feature. So you can literally just keep taking measurement after measurement after measurement and you don't need to do anything, it will save it for you. This unit, whilst it can save, you have to save the data manually with the press of the button here. Also has hold, but again it's manual with the press of this button here. Um, uh, depending on how you're testing the batteries, certainly with probes, that can be uh, become quite entertaining because uh, you don't really have a spare hand to start pressing buttons on this. Uh, whereas this one you don't need to do that at all. Okay, so in terms of price, this retails for around about £2,000 in the UK. This is around about £1,300. They do sell another version of this. It's around about £760. And that has a reduced resistance range from 0.1 milliohms to 200 ohms. So still a greater resistance range than this one. Uh, but nowhere near what this one can do. And the batteries that I was testing went above 200 ohms as well, so this is the one I opted for. Okay, so that's pretty much the basics of the instruments. I'll clear the desk and I'll set up a couple of batteries. Okay, so we've got a little 12 volt lead acid battery here. Um, we've got it hooked to our bolts with bypassing. We've got the one ohm resistor and a one ohm inductor here. Bypassing it all at the moment, so if I go on here, and you can see, there's my measurement, and we're over range. Uh, yes, actually that is another thing that I don't, that's another thing I didn't mention with this, this unit does auto range, this doesn't. It's a manual set only. But we'll go again. So 86.3 milliohms from my battery terminals there. With that one you can see it's hold it, and it'll sit there with that now. If I go to this one here, and here we go, click through the ranges, 83.1, 83.2, 12 pretty that's there on the voltage, slightly lower resistance reading, but as I take the probe away, you lose the reading. Um, oh, I can, haha, <laughs> and <laughs> see here, you see the problem, you see. Um, Mm -mm -mm. Yep, you need a third hand to press that hold button. Okay, never mind. Let's uh, tweak this out and we'll put this on too. So we're going through the one ohm resistor now. Okay, so we're on. Oh, we've actually got it there, haven't we? Uh, 1.092, 12 points. So you see the voltage stayed the same, but we're on 1.092 ohms. And we'll chuck him out of the way and just. Him, go for the reading on him. Uh, exactly the same way. Trick myself up again. Take to three ohms. 1.088 as opposed to 1.092. Pretty much there, really. Uh, again, same voltage, 12.88. So, just to show that these units operate 
in the same manner. I'll uh, just drop this one out. And I'll put in the inductor just to show that it's an AC signal. Um, so I can't remember. I think this inductor was around about 120 milliohms DC resistance. Uh, but with it being an AC test signal, it should be closer to the one ohm. But we'll see if it reacts in the same manner. Okay, that's uh, that one done. Go for the Hayoki first. 1.092. And we'll go for Applant. 1.097, 12.2. 1.097. Again, so consistent voltage, fairly consistent uh, resistance reading. Again, it's an impedance and AC signal, so the value seen across with the inductor in series is much greater than its DC resistance because of the AC test signal that these units use. Okay, let's pull him off of there, chuck him out of the way before we short him out, because that would not be much fun. Okay, so these two little fellows here are the backup batteries that I have inside protection relays and I say some PLCs. Um, it's uh, an inorganic lithium battery, so it's quite a special battery, um, quite powerful for such a small size and they last for absolutely years. Inside the protection relays these will be on microamps being drawn from them, so they last a very, very long time. Um, this one here is new, so we'll measure this one first. And if I go with the Hioki, you'll see we're on the 3 ohm range anyway, which is the highest range this can go to. And go there, you see we get 3.54 volts. And we get in 1.9 ohms. That's very strange. It starts to go up. So I'll put a plot up of these cells. They start at around about 100 ohms, and around about 400, 500 ohms, they're pretty much defunct. So I'm not quite sure why that's measuring two ohms. Let's see what we get with this one. So there you see 123, 124 ohms, 3.65 volts. A little bit, yes. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure why the Hioki was seeing that as uh, 1.2 ohms. That's quite intriguing. Dropped a little bit. So you see, the, the applant doesn't measure quite as fast as the BT3554. It takes a little while to settle, whereas this is very, very fast to settle. So that one's pretty much brand new ish. This one is, oh, in fact, I can tell you it's. Um, so we'll look at that. Uh, okay, so the date code on this is March 04, 2004. This one is September 20. So this is years old. If you measure it with this, you can see I'm up at 600 ohms, um, but still 3.68 volts. So the voltage coming out is fine, but obviously its capacity has really, really dropped off. So this one's defunct, which after coming on 16 years, you'd expect it to be, I guess. Well, let's try measuring it with the high O key. And let's just see. Interestingly, it didn't, didn't save the reading last time, did it? It's not giving me a reading at all. 3.69. So let's uh, just turn him off. Uh, so it's just reading. It's a wee bit strange. My original, my good battery. Three point five four, and now you see it's over range. Hmm, not sure what was uh, happening first time round. 
0.62, but that's what I was expecting it to do. Let's go for this one. This one, it doesn't want to give me a reading at all. I can get voltage there. I want to try and press a little bit harder. I don't get resistance reading. Hmm, not sure what's happening with that one. But this really is specifically for these unusual batteries that I have that have a very high resistance. Um, in terms of measurements on normal stationary battery systems, I'll stick a picture up of what I mean of that. Um, for me, this unit is way, way more superior than this unit, uh, predominantly because of the speed at which it can operate at, and also the um, auto hold and auto save function that this doesn't have. Um, yeah, that would be my uh, much preferred unit. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. As I say I'll leave links to uh, the manufacturer sites on these two units and the Element 14 road test. Um, I'll leave you with a summary of the battery measurements that I've made on this video, and I'll see you again in another video.